Okay, welcome to another shop tour. First one of 2022. I'm really excited about this year, getting the new shop up and running, lots of new bits of kit to talk about and discuss. I'm going to be taking you through over the next few weeks, um, just not too in depth, but kind of decisions behind why I pick certain machines or certain options on certain machines. Um, and then coming very soon is the two tables I did before Christmas. So if you want to just watch builds and kind of tech stuff is not your bag, then wait until they come, be editing them next week. Um, but today I want to discuss um, my new spindle moulder and I've gone for a full map for Profile 45Z. I'm going to take you through the options that I expect on the machine and the reason that I picked the machine. Um, so let's dive in and have a quick look at what I've got here and why I bought it. So the reason I went for the Profile 45Z was um, we've got Digital Rise and Fall, which is and there's kind of nudge here, a bit like my uh, planer. It's amazing when you're doing tenons, you know if you've been doing tenons on a spindle molder, especially if you've only got one disc, I have a pair up here, um, it's really hard to get those tenons accurate. Lots and lots of test cuts and little turns. With this, it's just a breeze. You can zero it off uh, and right down where your tenon was, so 62, and it's so easy to move it around, come back to 62 and you're done. We've also got the digital tilt, which is pretty cool. So I can see me using that a lot more. Again, it, you know, when you're working with angles on spindle molders, you're always just constantly doing test cuts. And this, this is to remove the need for a test cut. Now, maybe I wish I'd have got the infinite option, but I've actually got belt, you change the belt in the side. Um, it does show you digitally what speed it's running at. Again, unless you're using these big tenon in discs, which I'm gonna show you in a minute, you're mostly leaving this thing running at 6,000 um, um, RPM, and that is most of my um, discs, cutters, rebaters, you know, whatever I've got. Most of my stuff is the White Hill, and they all run from around about four to 7,000 or something like that. So 6,000 covers most things. It's only when you get up to these really big discs, 250, I said I'll show you in a minute, that you need to drop it down to four, um, four and a half thousand. One of the main reasons for this spec and this model of machine is I wanted the digital fence, really useful. I'm gonna use the rise and fall and digital fence is just absolute game changer. Let me just show you. So really easy, you can just nudge it forward and back like you would on a say, digital table saw. You've got your little nudge here. You can set your, your whichever cutter you're using, zero it out and then go back by 10 mil. So, so easy. Again, much less test cutting. This is also magnetic. So if you're used to changing your tools and stuff, um, you know, you've got to keep doing the screws. So another real time saver. Now I have ordered a quick change for that. I'm going to show you that when it comes in a couple of weeks. So you don't use, need to use a great big Allen key to lock that down. The guard on this model is amazing as well. You just bring this down, no need to keep removing it. Real simple adjustments here for in and out. So you can just change that. If you don't want to use it out of the way, you can just push it up out of the way like that. No need to remove it. A guard on this one, really nice, moves into place. This one here will hold your workpiece either down onto the deck or against the fence. And when you're finished with it, simply move it out of the way like that, which is great. So there's something else that's quite different. Because you've got the digital fence, obviously the machine needs to know where it is. So rather than having this traditional, I'm not sure if you're familiar with most spindle molders, they just use one of these locks and you can move the fence around like that, remove it when you're finished with it and it's quite heavy, especially when you get to these large machines um, and you just tend to touch one side. It doesn't matter if it's dead parallel to the cutter. It's a bit like a drill press with a, um, a fence on there. You're just offsetting either side to get the cut you need. Because this is digital, it is absolutely parallel, more like a table saw and I really like that because you can bring work pieces in, bump it off there, set it to 10 mil and do your repeat cuts and you're not worried about the in and the out feed. You can offset the out feed side of the fence on a dial, it's really simple. If you bring it up to zero, that's exactly parallel now, similar to a table saw. I was doing some tenon in, so I just moved it away a few mils so that the tenon didn't hit that when it came in. Now, because the fence, as I said, is fixed to the table, there's no need to remove it when you wanna do tenon in, or if you wanna do some curved work, you can just pull the cord, lift this up here, and it will fold out of place there. It can actually go, if you move the machine away from the wall, if you've got more space, it can go all the way back, right down on itself, but it never gets removed from the machine. 
and so there's no calibrator. When you put it back on, push the piece down like this, and there it is, ready to go again. So I could have gone for the top of the line Felder machine rather than the format, um, but there's loads of little things, like once you've added the digital fence, you've added this spec and that spec. Now the other thing is this hood, which has a really cool, it's a little feature, but it's really cool. None of those keep turning those things. Um, so for tool changing, it's really, really good. And the key is that this hood can have 250. So these are massive cutters uh, from Whitehill, these rebate cutters. There's a pair of 250 cutters, gives me 100 mil of tenon in one go, one pass, and they fit inside this. So there's no need to remove it. I'll show you the tenon in setup in a moment. There's no need to remove any of this um, if you want to use even up to a 200 rebate cutter. And the deck itself, or the cast iron bed, I've still got a ring on there. You could remove that and you can have up to 320 of tooling going underneath. So that is a massive disc. That is absolutely massive. These are the biggest discs I've used so far. Now you can opt here, this can be removed and you can have a big swing arm, uh, more like a table saw. Now I've just opted for this cross cut. So I spec mine with the 1.1 meter cross cut fence and it's got the kind of sliding bed here for doing your tenons. And I'll show you the tenon in setup just in a second. So I'm sure there's some other really good spindle molders on the market. But you know that I really like my Felder stuff. And a good thing about sticking with the same brand, similar to having DeWalt or Festool with all your batteries, is that um, the, the things like the extensions, this one is the cast extension. You can put one each side, I've got the option for that. So that means you've got that longer bed. And this extension is used on my um, planar thickness search, it's used on my bandsaw, it's even used on my um, mortiser. So really cool one thing, you can just keep moving it around. That's another really good thing about kind of, if you find something, a brand that you like, and it's much more modular, um, rather than having lots of different connections for everything. So power feeders, then they're a really big part of spindle molders. If you want to get that kind of consistent mold, if you're doing shaping moldings, a power feeder is not only going to hold it in place, but it's uh, more importantly, going to push it at a consistent uh, speed to give you that kind of, um, you know, give you the best finish, depending on the size of the tooling. So I've gone for the option with the Vario speed, which means I kind of move this and it doesn't have a fixed speed. I'm not sure if I really needed that, but it wasn't a lot more. And depending on some of the weird mouldings or if you're going to push stuff through with these big discs, it can be handy sometimes to just slow it down. You do a test cut, just slow it down a little bit and then see, does the cut look cleaner or worse? And so that's really good. Um, now, one of the things when you have the... Uh, non-removable fence if you like which is going to swing back because it's digital you can't mount your power feeder directly to the cast table here these four points this is where your power feeder would normally be connected but if you were to mount your power feeder to the table when you lifted up this fence because it's not a removable fence like a standard fence the fence would then hit the feeder so you do need to also spec this jointed arm here which allows you to move the feeder away from the machine so that you can do your work and then you bring it back, clamp it on, and then you're back to a power feeder. So you do need that extension arm if you're gonna spec a machine with a digital fence. Okay, so this is the tenoning setup. Um, there is an optional hood and guard, and also the plates, well, there's a couple of plates and you can all do switch it around in 45s. Um, this lifts it above the cast bed just to give you um, a more accurate uh, repeatable cut. I found clamping to the old F3 and having the wood, if there's any kind of any kind of slight movement in the wood and it catches the uh, cast plate, then you can get deflections while you're tenoning. So always use something to lift it off your sliding bed here, this tenoning plate. So there is actually a proper hood. Um, I'm going to show you in a minute, you remove or well, lift this up, the fence system, the hood goes on and that gives you up to 320 um, I think that's the maximum, I'll have to check, I'll put it on the screen. So another great thing about the Profile 45 um, is the size of the opening. Now the opening in the cast here is 320, you can actually drop uh, a 320 disc down. Um, these are 250 uh, Whitehill uh, rebate cutters, a pair of them. They'll give you a maximum of 100. And what's great about the 250 disc, you can actually leave um, the original fence set up on, you don't have to go with the tenoning hood um, now with the tenoning hood, you'll lift the fence up out the way, drop the hood, clamp it on. You can move it right up here. And depending on the size of your tenons, if it's smaller tenons, you can actually immerse the whole, the hood will come right up to here, 
cover it all round. Uh, if you're just doing small turns, obviously longer ones, um, you know, depending on the size. I was fortunate enough to find this. Uh, this is an ex showroom machine because it's quite a long wait for, to get these built. So there's a couple of things I would expect that they didn't didn't come with. I have ordered those, um, and I'll show you when they arrive. Let me just show you this tallest change. Now this is a standard feature. You just pull that up here, turn your spindle. As soon as it locks, you can then get your Allen key, pull that off. Now what I've done, I've ordered uh, the quick release version of this, so I don't need this big Allen key. Um, I do want to use this machine more. One of the things with spindle molders for me has always been how kind of slow and clunky tool changes are. You sort of think, oh, well, I'll try and do it on my router. Um, and now I've got this digital fence and this amazing sliding table, I've actually ordered the router option for the spindle. So this can actually be like a jumbo router, and I think that's gonna be stunning. So some of the really cool router bits that are around these days um, from Tipman and that, and having a digital fence with a bump stop and having this brilliant sliding table and the parallel fence here is gonna be absolutely brilliant. So in the up position, this is how you change your blocks and your cutters. In the middle is your cut position and all the way down, Go inside here and you can change your belts. As I showed you before, when you change the belts, this, the RPM comes up here. I kind of wish I had the variable speed. I'm not sure it would be one less thing to change, but I don't change the speed that much. So another option that was spec with this machine is these guards here. They go down, they slide down. You can adjust them around your tooling just for more safety and you know a lot more support in case the piece is gonna move in, especially when you're using the power feeder. It's really good to have something across here. But lots of people do, and so do I make a sacrificial fence sometimes and then just bring the cutter through and you just see the bit of the cutter protruding that you're gonna use and it gives you that extra support and safety with a power feeder. There is another option, the Agna fence, which has the fingers, if you've seen, that move. That's even quicker than removing these. But I think this option is going to be enough for me for now. I think the Agner option is quite expensive and I'm not sure I really need it. Um, these are really good, really good idea. I haven't seen these before. Okay, that's it for this one. I think I'm going to wrap it up. Um, I am going to be doing a kind of more in depth once I've used the machine a bit more. I will show you it fired up in action. Um, but just to kind of recap on my, my reasoning behind picking this machine, if I'd have gone slightly down to the top of the Felder range, and added all the options I wanted, like the digital fence and da da da, all this stuff. It gets quite close in money, um, and you can't get the 250 discs inside the hood here, which is really what I wanted because that's the main size cutter that I use for tenons. Um, and it's kind of just overall, the build is just that little bit better. As I said, I was quite fortunate. This was um, like a showroom machine that I found, so I almost got it within about three weeks. And it, nearly every option, other than maybe the variable speed motor, every option I wanted uh, was on there, so I was really fortunate. Um, and I, as I say, I think once you just, you get to a point where you're specking these things and they're so close to the next one up, and I just decided this is my kind of lifetime purchase, I don't want to be buying another spindle molder. I was tempted to buy the, the CNC or X motion option, but it, to be honest, the way I use a spindle molder, um, having memories is not the, the most important thing because it's kind of mainly just me working. So going for the full option, maybe there's more to go wrong. Maybe it's a lot of tweaking and programming rather than just zeroing and nudging. So for me, this kind of fits the bill. It does feel very similar to the Felder planer when you're operating it, the rise and fall. So I'm very used to that. And I, I just love this machine. I love having this fixed fence. The idea of not removing the fence when you want to put it, it's really, really heavy, you can drop it or whatever. Um, even on the, the uh, F3, which I sold, just that small fence was very, very heavy. So having this whole hood and fence with magnets, it's all the little things that make the difference that you're not continually using tools and to change things. So for me, this is absolutely brilliant. I'm really pleased with it. I can't wait to get using it. So much windows and doors to do since the fire here alone, plus some orders going on. So I'm really looking forward to it. I can't wait to get the option for the router bit, because I think that's gonna be the ultimate router. If you're not using your spindle molder, just drop that in. When you need to do any routing, CNC style routing, that's gonna be amazing. So um, anyway, I hope that answered your questions. Like I say, if there's anything I missed out, I'll be doing it in depth. So please ask in the comments. I'll make a note and I'll come back to it. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks so much for watching and all your support. I'll see you soon.